Hey, Kurt Stone. It's Andy Hoffman, your third favorite geek. Congratulations on 500 episodes of Podcasting Glory. What an amazing accomplishment. Be proud of what you've done. Kurt, I also want to thank you for the amazing friendships I've developed into the podcast. If it wasn't for this show, I would not be, I would not have gone to G3 and I would not have made some amazing friendships, which led to Floor Charcuterie Board reenacting the planes, trains, and automobiles pillow and my new quest for sleeping on all the toddler beds at the DVC resorts. Kurt, thank you. Congratulations again on 500 episodes. Thanks, Andy, for that intro, and happy birthday to you, Andy. I know you had a great time. Had a nice dinner last night with a beautiful steak. Andy texted me his steak, and Andy's one of those guys who's always reaching out to me, wondering what's going on, checking in on me, and you know, we've made a lot of friends through this podcast. It's more than a podcast. It's a great place to meet and get to know some people who are also crazy about Disney World. Hey, Disney World geeks, Curtis Stone here, and I'm the Podfather host of this amazing Geekin family. Welcome to episode 520 of the Geekin on Walt Disney World podcast. This week, our good friend, Jackie Cole, shares her family trip to Disney World with her husband and her two young boys. We talk about how their experience going to Disney World with the kids is always a little different as they grow up. And I've been having fun talking and hanging out with friends like Jackie, reviewing trips to Disney parks for over nine years. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I started the podcast with my daughter, Lindsay, talking about our Disney World trips, and then we brought on our Disney geeks, our friends, to tell their trip stories. Our listeners are so positive, caring, generous, and they are experienced Disney geeks. You'll get lots of ideas and tips for your next trip to Disney World. From their real-world experiences and trip reports, we do encourage a family atmosphere, and we'd love for you, too, to join our Geek and Family. We've got an amazing private discussion group in Facebook. Search for Geekin on WDW Family. You can ask questions, share your trip pictures, just have fun with one of the best group of Disney World geeks out there on the internet. We're also independent Disney-authorized travel guides with FTC Elite Travel. And we'd love to be your travel guides, help you book your room, tickets, dining reservations. You'll notice many of our guests on the podcast book their trips, transfer trips, and chat Disney World with our traveling tiaras. That's my wife, Margita Mama. We call her and got her good friend, Auntie Judy. Email them, travelingtierras at gmail.com. Check the show notes. You'll see their email as well as mine. And we'd love for you to reach out to us, talk about Disney World. Whether you come on the podcast to tell us your trip or book a trip, a cruise, go to Universal Studios, Adventures by Disney, like our friend Megan Dorsey. We'll be talking to her soon as she comes back from Egypt on that amazing trip. Yeah, just email them, travelintiers at gmail to get started. Well, before I do the feature trip report with Jackie, I've got an announcement from my good friend Wendy Fox, our awesome host up in Albany, New York. We're having a a geek me getting some friends together in the summertime. Wendy sent me in this audio, a fun little poem inviting you up to our geek meet in Albany. August 5th, a couple weeks from now. Twas two weeks before Albany went all for the land. Geeks were buzzing with excitement. The meetup will be grand. We get to see our geek and pals, we shouted with glee, dreaming of friends new and old that soon we would see. There'll be sharing of potluck with an abundance of food, a feast fit for geeks to set the perfect mood. Starting with mimosas of plenty to desserts galore, our taste buds will surely be in for a score. We'll play Geek and Jeopardy, a game so thrilling, testing our knowledge if our minds are willing. From Disney trivia to geeky facts so rare, we'll compete with a laughter, a friendly affair. 
And then comes one highlight, the Disney gift exchange, where each brings a wrapped present carefully arranged. From pins to plush toys and magical souvenirs, we share our love for Disney by spreading some cheer. The night will be filled with laughter and delight as geeks gather together, their spirits shining bright. With memories to be made and friendships to grow, join us on August 5th to be part of the show. With the anticipation, we count down the days awaiting the adventure in so many ways. So don't miss out. Go on, get packing, or the FOMO you feel will not be lacking. Tell Wendy you are coming to Tawasent the Park. We start at noon and end when it gets dark. So as the geeks prepare for the Albany meet, excitement fills the air, making our hearts beat. Thanks, Wendy. I'll be there. Can't wait to see you in a couple of weeks and all the friends that'll be there also have a great time. We have fun even when we're not in Disney World. But Jackie, she was in Disney World with her family, Pop Century. Her boys are six and eight years old. They went to Oga's, Sci-Fi Diner, Le Cellier, Space 220, Connections Eatery, Topolino's, Boardwalk Bakery, Sebastian's Bistro, Yak and Yeti. They did the Tron preview. New roller coasters for the kids as they've gotten older, you know, they change our kids as they grow older. It's fun each stage of their childhood, bringing them to Disney World. They have some birthday and other pixie dust stories. The boys go bass fishing. Yes, that's something I'd love to do on a trip to Disney World. She talks about what her favorite way is to do Disney and some tips for our friends who are newbies. Well, Jackie and Selena are one of my favorite sisters who are a part of the Geek and Family. I'll never forget our first meeting in Epcot, and they continue to be awesome friends in the community and a big part of the Grand Geek and Gathering planning coming up 67 days as of today. I'm so happy I got a chance to share Jackie this week with you and her family trip to Disney World. So I love meeting listeners into the parks. It's always fun to meet people for the very first time. My guest tonight coming on the show, doing her first really solo with me, Trip Report, had one of my favorite meetups ever. One of the favorite pictures that came from that meetup, and it still rotates on my desktop here, the wallpaper. And so I'm so excited to bring Jackie Cole. Hi, Kurt. Hi, Geeks. Yeah. You got to let the crowd no. welcome you oh, in. I know. I get so excited. I get so excited. <laughs> How you doing? Hi, Kurt. Hi, Geeks. I'm yeah. doing good. How are you? So great. Yeah, I was looking back and did a little search. I know you've come on with your sister, Selena. I have. And yeah, and she, yeah. and I've done the, the podcast. We've done round tables and... I guess I just never, I mean, I always go with her. And even in this trip report, she's, we're on the trip together, but we've never done a solo trip report. I'm excited. This is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And you guys are so I'm, supportive, both you and your sister, with all our meetups. And so thank you for all you've done for the podcast. Well, thanks for, I mean, it wouldn't have started without you, Kurt. So <laughs> right back at you. <laughs> we've made a lot of friends, haven't we? Yeah, we have. It's been, I mean... At least three or four years. Probably, I mean, it's two, yeah, maybe even five years. I don't even know. I honestly don't know how long it's been, but it has been a time. <laughs> it all starts to run together, Jackie. I know. And I love that you did some three of the fun Walt Disney World facts about yourself. I like this very first one. You performed one of the favorite things of all geeks, the holiday candlelight processional at Epcot. That's fun. When did, did you do that? So that was in high school, in course, and it was obviously not a solo thing. They had these big rafters, or I forget what they're called, bleachers, or I'm not really sure what they call them, but you, as a high school chorus, you have to try out. So we would rehearse and rehearse, and then you'd have to record the chorus performing the songs. And if you were selected, you got to go up to Epcot and perform, and we did both shows. So you would do the, I think it's like 5.30 and 7 o'clock. I'm not, I don't, yeah. it's, it's been a while <laughs> since I've done it. And so, yeah, I re we did that two years in a row mm -hmm. while I was in chorus. It was a lot of fun. And I never realized, I didn't make the connection what I was 
performing for mm. until in adulthood you go and you watch it and you're singing along and like oh my gosh mm. this is what i was doing <laughs> yes <laughs> that's a, a great fun fact my daughter Lindsay, yeah. i can relate to that we we're just i was just talking to her because we've been going to new york city quite a bit we've been following our travels and mm -hmm. she sang at carnegie hall twice same kind of thing oh fun uh yeah, high school. That, that was a bucket list thing too, but I'm no longer in a chorus, so <laughs> I don't know if I could do it on my own. <laughs> yeah, you want to do a little singing? I love having oh. my guests come on. No, she's just... <laughs> no it has been 20 years since I have done any sort of performance. <laughs> There's a lot of competition too with the, some of the people who have sung on my podcast, yeah. acapella. <laughs> yes, so I haven't even done karaoke with geeks. So. Ah, that's what we can do. <laughs> it's we can fix that. Maybe I'll start there. <laughs> Jackie, you got to go to a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Loosen up the vocal cords. Yeah, I know exactly. the nerves. I We're going to do, I don't know if we're going to do karaoke at G3 this time, but we're talking about doing the dueling pianos on the boardwalk, yeah. which is something I've never done. I think you can, that's a sing along song time, right? That, that mm -hmm. is, I mean, I haven't been to a dueling piano situation in mm -hmm. Very long time. And that's at Jelly Rolls, isn't it? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. I don't know when that's going to get in. I know G3 gets killed very quickly. That's going to be a Saturday. Special. That's going to be the geek, like the real geek uh, day. Yeah. I think. yeah. So that's also the Boys to Men concert, Kurt. So like, oh, it's going to be tough. <laughs> I am amazed. I was down in DC with the Kesslers and Jeff, we were having dinner and Jeff Kessler was like, really talking them up i didn't realize they were so big i mean yeah they were like the r&b band of all r&b yeah. boy bands in the 90s i feel like i mean i sure. was a huge fan so for them to be performing at the same time we're going to be there i'm like i'm yeah i'm fangirling a little bit i'm very excited <laughs> well we're gonna do we will get to your trip report we're gonna <laughs> do we're gonna do it's like a Geektoberfest theme. We're going to do the yes. beer garden. And right. I'd really like to include the dining package for the right. musical acts. Yeah. I'd, for that day. Um, have, they haven't posted those, right? That's not coming out for another yet. few weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I too would be interested in that. I'm very, yeah. like I said, boy, this is going to be a highlight for me. Yes. <laughs> you can't have me on a round table for G3 because that's probably all I will talk about. <laughs> I'm very excited about it. <laughs> I have an edit button. Don't worry. <laughs> oh jackie's talking about boys to men again just edit that out <laughs> I, you know it, it's interesting the locals that will come out to certain acts and you when the ones that they are really popular boy the crowds come out and that's gonna be a saturday I bet. right i bet it's, i'm it's gonna be a tough thinking that's ticket. gonna be one of the ones that is more popular that one and like hansen's gonna be a popular one hmm. for them i think i didn't see what the other lists are and i know hansen goes every year but right i don't they got a following. Remember, You're right. But, some, some of these have yeah. real, like, a little cult following. So that's awesome. Yeah. Well, because uh, if you think about it, all of these mm -hmm. artists were popular when we were right. the age that we would be listening to all this music. Yep. And for me, I wasn't really allowed to go to concerts until I was much older. And by then I was kind of like, eh, <laughs> that costs money. <laughs> it's funny you're talking about, I'm going to talk about Hanson. I'm going to do Amy Rhodes, her trip report tomorrow night. We've had a lot of geeks down right. in the parks lately, haven't we? They, we have been infiltrating the parks. <laughs> Can't keep it straight. Seems like, yes. Now, your son danced with Cinderella at the Grand Floridian. How'd that happen? He did. Oh, my gosh. That was so cute. So I don't think they do it now. I'm hoping they bring it back. But she used to do these parades through Grand Floridian every day at like 3 or 4 o'clock. And they would come and they would take all of the little children and they would do a little parade through the Grand Floridian and then she and Prince Charming usually would do a dance in the Grand Hall and then all the little kids would follow. But that day didn't they didn't have a Prince Charming. So she walked around and just kind of scanned the, the room of who to pick. And she picked my oldest son, who at the time was only like three or three and a half. And it was just the most adorable thing. I'm like crying because I'm just a, a sobbing mess. Like, oh my goodness, this is so cute. <laughs> and he bowed and he danced with her. I have the whole thing on video and I just, it comes up on my Facebook memories. And every year that it comes up, I share it again. I'm like, I will never forget this. This is so gosh darn cute. I can't take it. That was, <laughs> so, I remember this. I remember seeing this. Not I post it every year. Every time it's on the memories, I'm like, oh, look at everybody. Yeah. Here it is. Well, I've been the at the proof. Grand 
<laughs> I've been at the Grand Flory when they used to do that. I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and it's just, it's yeah. really sweet. And I hope they bring that back because that was just such a sweet thing for even all of the kids, all the kids that got to like walk around with her. It was great. That's right. How old is he now? He is eight and a half. He'll be nine yeah. in December. All right. He's still a little guy. You know, well, he's then. still little. Yes. I, <laughs> he thinks he's very big, but he is still little. Yes. <laughs> yes. You mentioned here in your number three, what I said in the intro. You met Margita, I thought, Ken, I Judy. thought we were going to be on the same level with that one, Kurt. Are, I, <laughs> here we are. I, so you put in here, you, you didn't know anything about the podcast, but your sister, Selena, was a big listener, and we met at Epcot for the first yes. time. So to tell my how I portray it when I tell Geeks this, Selena and I were at Epcot, and it was one of my first, like, away from the kids trip. And she posed it as a... Hey, I am, there's somebody here at the parks I want to go see. And that happens a lot because we're from Florida. And when people come, they always let us know, hey, we'll be in the parks if you're around. And she said it. And I said, oh, okay, well, who is it? She goes, well, this guy who does a podcast. And I was like, what, A, what is a podcast? Because I didn't know. I didn't know. And two, does he like know you're going to show up? And or are you just going to just like, spring hey, on. I'm you have to spring on him and be like, Hey, I'm, and I was like, well, is it going to be weird? I don't, are you sure? I don't know. It's going to get weird. Is this okay? Is this <laughs> yeah, okay? It might get weird. weird. internet friends, Selena. What is this? <laughs> and, uh, but it turned out to be great, obviously. <laughs> and it was unexpected because I was just, well, who are we meeting? Do you even know them? Have you met? What's going on? So I just didn't understand what it was. <laughs> Clearly, I now get it. <laughs> it's one of my favorite meetings. It's one of my favorites for several reasons. And that's what you're, I love hearing your perspectives. I've never heard that before, but I was at one of my favorite places, the UK Pavilion, listening right. probably to, or getting ready for the music or something like that. And you guys came from like the garden area. And <laughs> I think I had my back to you. And I'm one of these people, my kids know this for sure. If you sneak up on me, like I'll jump like a mile. And mm -hmm. I don't know, if, I don't know how, did you tap me on the shoulder? I don't remember, but. It had to be That's Selena because I wouldn't yeah. have recognized you. No, right. <laughs> yeah. Selena must have recognized me. But just the picture that we had, we have the best picture from that. Yeah. And the smiles. And of course I jumped. But you guys, I mean, you guys are so adorable. The sisters, come on. I mean, you guys are just the cutest <laughs> thing ever. So that was so great. I didn't know you got a chance to meet Margita, Ken, and Judy too. When was that? I think, I feel like Same you guys day? were all together. Where were we? You? Okay. Maybe yeah, we were. And then we went to Disney Springs. And I can't, I yes, cannot that's right. for the we life had a of there. Yeah, you guys had like an impromptu geek meet yeah. and invited us and we went. And I was still kind of, I was a little overwhelmed. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's just kind of like. It's how it all starts. It's how it always starts. <laughs> yeah, it was like a Seinfeld. Who are these people? <laughs> but it turned out great. <laughs> a little quiet. Don't ever Selena. be afraid to meet Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> a little quiet Selena, right? Yeah. Yeah. She's, you guys are awesome. Become my mama, two of my favorite sisters. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. All right. So this trip, Jackie, who went on the trip? Okay. So I'm going to do two separate trips, but in combined, it's only seven days because we live close to the parks. And when we go, it's usually a weekend type of getaway. So the first trip was in March. The second trip was in June, but we'll talk about it like it was kind of one. And I I'll, like it. I love yeah. this. I'm glad you... <laughs> I'm glad you're taking control. This is perfect. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I figured to get enough content, as if we can't really fill an hour, Kurt, you and I, but to get enough content, I felt like I could do both because we did a lot in Love these it. seven days. And you guys are from South Florida. So when you come up, you got to yes. stay overnight, right? You would think that, but we have been known to do trips where we drive up and come back in the same day. We live about three hours away. It's doable, On, right? Door to door, if it's three hours, it's not a problem. We did, we do sometimes run into traffic, which extends it or weather or whatever. But mm. yeah, these the times were overnight trips. Yeah. Fantastic. So where'd you stay on these two trips? Both times at the pop. We seem to be in the pop vortex, yep. me and my family. We have stayed at other places, like at the Falmouth. <laughs> but for these two specific trips, they were both at the pop. Very popular place, actually. I like the pop. Yeah. yeah I was not huge fan until that Skyliner went up and that has changed my complete perspective of it. The ease of the Skyliner to go to the parks is like, it is really nice. 
Yeah. Who's in your family? How many you got? The, in March, it was just my me, my husband, and my two boys, wh- who are eight and six years old. Oh. And then in June, it was the same group. And then Selena and her husband were staying at the Riviera. So they for being they were at the very posh location. Yes. <laughs> no kids. Which we took total advantage of. By the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She doesn't so have it was, how, she doesn't have DVC, does she? Oh. She does have DVC she actually, does. but she has resale DVC, so her DVC points can't be used at Riviera. Okay. But she wanted to stay there because the June trip was for our birthdays in conjunction with Father's Day. Very great. Yeah. All right. Well, we know all. Yeah, you're right. The pop has been, the price has gone up too because of that yes. Skyliner we're talking yes. to Margita yes. about, right? <laughs> yes. But we happen to stay because we're pass holders and Florida residents. We happen to get the, I can't remember which deal. They put deals out there all the time for us. Yeah. And, and we got some really good rates both in March and in June. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. The annual pass rate has been pretty decent. Mm-hmm. Any other standouts from pop? I think most people know. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people talk about Pop on the podcast. Yeah. My kids love the Murphy bed in, oh. the pod, in the Pop Century. Good. They are big fans. They love to put it up in the morning to eat the breakfast. Yeah. Love to pull it. They fight over who gets to set it up at night. Wish they fought that much about cleaning their room and doing their beds <laughs> here, but that's fine. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I You can see the fireworks from Pop. I made a note to mention that. And I didn't know that. Until one of the nights I was walking to get ice and I was like, oh my gosh, those are the Epcot fireworks. That's amazing. You can see them from that far away. It was great. Yeah, you're close. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it obviously depends on where you're located within that resort, but it's a possibility. (laughs) (laughs) Look in the sky. Sometimes I saw the launches from Cape Canaveral. It's funny you mentioned that because there was a launch while we were there (laughs) that weekend. And we couldn't see it because it's so cloudy, but you can see them sometimes. Well, SpaceX now goes. Yeah, it's really cool. Now, let's talk food. Did you guys, yes. what do you guys do for food when you go on these trips? We didn't do a whole lot, only like two or three pages full. <laughs> <laughs> I got an hour. <laughs> you know how okay, do we roll so- here. <laughs> we, in March, so our March trip that we went up to, We basically did kind of a repeat thing. So we did two days in Hollywood Studios, two days in Epcot, one day at Magic Kingdom, one day at Animal Kingdom and a resort day between the two trips. Mm. So seven days total. So in March, we did Hollywood Studios first. And we, I said we ate at Oga's, but we didn't really eat anything at Oga's. My kids are right now obsessed with Star Wars. Oh, good. Obsessed. Will tell me things. That I have no idea what they are. I mean, I've seen the movies, but I don't know what certain things are called or I don't know much about it other than the basics. I have the basics down, but that was their thing. We need to go to Star Wars. So I booked Oga's. They loved Oga's. I think I wrote down the kids got a carbon freeze, which is essentially just like a Powerade. And they put a piece of, I think, dry ice possibly at the bottom to make it yeah. bubble and fizz. Oh, that was Amazing for them. They're like, oh my gosh, it's knocking. I'm like, it is. Jackie, I, tell you, I get so jealous when I hear these stories of the young kids. Because I was, I Star Wars was my generation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when I yeah, was their and, age, I was seeing the movies for the first time. And yeah. Can you imagine I just that age going into this such immersive world if you're a big fan, like, like a kid? It's, it is, I think I take for granted sometimes because we go a lot that there's new things happening for them all the time. Things are registering for them because they've been in Star Wars land. Or I know it's not called Star Wars land, so forgive me. Galaxy's those of you who, thank We got you. you. Sorry. We got you. I make mistakes Sorry. all the time. Don't worry about it. I host but, the show. Yeah. they There's something new clicking for them every time we go. And they've, because they've been on Millennium Falcon. They've been on Rise. They've been on all these rides. But for some reason... This particular trip and our trip in June, things were being, they were pointing out things like, mom, there's Chewbacca, mom, there's the Mandalorian. They were just so excited to see certain things. And it was like, well, you didn't care that much like a year ago when we went and this is exciting now. Yay. So 
Anyway, so Oga's was great. I, we've And we've been to Oga's. We've been to Oga's. I can't tell you how many times, but for some reason it was this time that the kids were like gung-ho about making it. Making like, the connection yes. with yes. the movie. It's so yeah. authentic to the bar scene. And this was the first time for my husband going to Oga's. He was, and he's not a huge Star Wars person either, but even he was like, that's probably the coolest thing we've done. And I was like, great. I'm glad I did that one. <laughs> so we did go to Sci-Fi, Sci-Fi Diner. And I, all I wrote was, we had a burger. I was like, <laughs> it was fun, but I feel like we had gone to Oga's that day. So it was, oh, uh-uh. yeah. Wow. <laughs> I know. That's what they were just, I was so excited to take them there. Cause like, look at it. It's so cool. And they're like, yeah. I had this like, conversation oh, okay. with someone and they shed a light on this for me. Kids that age, I don't know about you, but drive in theaters. A thing it's now. a foreign concept. It's, I know it is a foreign concept for them. They're kind of like, why are we watching a movie in a car? <laughs> it's like, oh. I know. And she said that to me. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so true. But again, and maybe, I and you know what? Maybe that was the problem with my kids and that they didn't think it was cool. And I was like, oh my gosh, that was, we were, we always wanted to do that. We always, because we had like one yeah. and it was far and we didn't really do it very often. But right. yeah. I didn't even think of that, but maybe that's what it was. They were just kind of they like, don't get what it. is that? What is this? And the is movies weird. are weird. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is that's kind true. of foreign. Yeah, that's true. Like old school movies that are like the fly and stuff. They're it's like, movies. mom, is that guy turning into a fly? I'm like, oh, well, yeah. It's, <laughs> I guess that's r- weird. Right over the head. <laughs> maybe when they're a little older and I can explain it to them, they'll get it. <laughs> Okay, so in March, the next day was Epcot for us, and that was our first time at La Cellier. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I've had the, the festival booths always have the Canada booth, and right. I've always had their stuff there, and I've always been, it's been on my, like, to-do list, my Disney to-do list. And we went, and it did not disappoint. Awesome. We had so much food. Mm-hmm. Holy moly. I had to, like, go through all the pictures to make sure I got mm-hmm. full, covered it all. So my kids were with us and you can order, this is, I don't know if it's a hot tip or if it's been said before, but for the kids menu, you can get a kid's size soup. And I had heard somewhere to get the kid's size soup and use it as a dip for your pretzel bread. And (laughs) we did. Yeah. And it was amazing. (laughs) I don't know that I've heard that tip. I love that tip. (laughs) I don't know where I heard it. I'm sure on a TikTok somewhere, but they were like, get the kid's size cheddar soup. It is like the perfect dippable amount yeah. of cheddar soup for your pretzel bread and it was a chef's kiss. it was good. so good I'm, oh, it was so you. good so we also got the wedge salad which was good but it was like the least <laughs> talked about thing from that yeah. from when we walked away we got the i'm sorry i'm just looking at my little notes here oh my husband and i split a ribeye because the ribeye was twice the size of any other of the steaks on the menu. <laughs> so he said, well, let's get the ribeye because then we can also get the poutine, which what, which is what we did. Good plan. So we got the poutine. Yeah, we go in with plans. <laughs> Let me go for these. We go in very Strategic. organized and planned. Sounds like a yeah. military campaign. <laughs> <laughs> so we got that. I had a wine flight, which I wasn't crazy about. I think it was a ice wine. I think that's what it was. Oh. It was like super sweet. Very sweet. So if you like sweet wines, I do. That All it right. would have been right up I, your alley. But well, I don't was, say this, but I've been dying to go back there. I've been a long time ago. It's been on my to do list, and I never seem to get there. So is? you're okay. killing me already. Yeah, oh, it was in a good way. It, make it happen. Yeah, the kids got a mac and cheese and steak. And what I have found, what I will say, is that there are a lot of menus, kids menus that are just okay. Yeah, La Celia was one of the. Thankfully, my kids like steak and mac and cheese, mm-hmm. but that was kind of one of the main offerings for them. Mm -hmm. So just be aware of that if your kids don't like those things. Are they big eaters, Jackie? (laughs) I feel like through Disney, they survive on popcorn, cheeseburgers, and ice cream. All right. that's So they're getting there. (laughs) That's on the pyramid. Yeah. (laughs) And then at at La Cellier, the kids also got a chocolate mousse that they fancy into a mousse, which I thought was a hoot. Oh, that's funny. They had that. It was... Years so ago, my kids had that, I think. Yeah, it was very cute. And then we got a maple creme brulee, which was, I mean, we couldn't go to Canada without getting something maple. So I love creme brulee. 
Nice. But that was so good. I highly recommend La Cellier. It was just awesome. so good. That makes me feel like so I, good. I still am thinking about it. I'm like, oh man, that stick was so good. <laughs> that makes me now, happy. I, ha- I have to say with that, the same day we went to Space 220. Uh-oh. And it was a letdown. Oh no, I got I know. Sad again. I know. So How come on the, the same opposite- day? That's kind of two big ones. Well, so here's the thing. We went to Space 220 Lounge, and my intention was just to, because I knew looking at the menu, my kids were not going to eat anything from there. So I said, well, let's go fill them up at La Cellier. And then a few hours later, we'll go to the lounge. And that way, we'll still get this experience. We'll still get to do the ambiance. Okay. And maybe we'll just order a drink. Yeah. Well, of course, my kids get in there and they're like, we're hungry. <laughs> oh, gosh. So you can't be hungry. We literally just <laughs> ate half of Canada. Like they you cannot be hungry. So I said, you have to split a cheeseburger because it's only three o'clock. We literally just ate three hours ago. You cannot be hungry. There's no way you can be hungry. And it, to me, this, it wasn't, the Space 220 is great for a one and done situation, in my opinion, <laughs> because they really enjoyed the elevator ride. They thought the screens and everything was really cool. But I have to be honest, we, so let me break this down. My kids got one of the special, they each got a specialty drink, which is essentially just like lemonade and pop rocks. Mm -hmm. So we got two kids specialty drinks, two iced coffees, no alcohol whatsoever, and one kid's cheeseburger that they split. And our meal was a (laughs) hundred dollars. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I think that you dropped the wrong bill (laughs) at this table. I mean, I'm not opposed to spending money at Disney, obviously, yeah. because right. we had just come from La Cellier. Yeah. But I was, it was sticker shock. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I say, I don't, we, we got coffee and lemonade. It, what was the price? I thought you were in space, not New York City. Oh, holy moly. I was like, <laughs> oh, I shouldn't, then can you just send me a shot to put in this coffee? <laughs> because it's only like the $3 more or something. <laughs> Good gravy. So. Yeah. Space 220 was cool. My kids still talk about the actual experience, but the food for me was just okay. I mean, yeah. and I've eaten there before. Right. So in, in the, still the same sentiment, like, eh. Yeah. I'm hearing this. If you're really into space, go for it. But yeah, we're hearing this. It, it could this be a not, skip. This is not uncommon. Yeah. Yeah. It could be a skip. So that's pretty much March. All right. Wow. That was okay. fast. We got through March already. Oof. But March was the shorter trip. <laughs> okay. June. Was the longer trip. All right. So June, the first day we were in Epcot, we did a lot of festival food, which I didn't even write about because everything is delicious in these festivals and they change all the time. So (laughs) the one thing I will say, my kids desperately wanted to try Frushi. And although I liked it, the kids were just like, what is this? I'm like, well, it's Frushi. It's fruit with rice. And they're like, ew. (laughs) You wanted this. You saw it on a thing and wanted it. I'm getting this impression you can't read your kids. Oh, man. They are. They get hyped, though, because what happens is I watch YouTube videos and they'll watch it with me. So they'll watch these bloggers that go in and try everything and they hype everything up. And they're like, oh, my gosh, this is so good. And they're like, Ah. well, they want to try that. And then they taste it. And they're like, no, I don't like that. Like, well, I could have told you you weren't going to like it, but. We just live in the moment when we're at Disney. <laughs> All things out the window. That is so true. You don't know. What you just, things... And I'm grateful that they're willing to try it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it hopefully one of these things will stick at some point. My kids, when so, we're in the room and they said, where are we going? We're going to Epcot. Ah, oh, I don't want to go to Epcot. That's all I you remember know, from my that's kids. That's how I was too. I was <laughs> like that growing up too. And I could not, like, I just didn't like Epcot. There was just, in my opinion, as a child. It just wasn't as fun as boring as the other parks, but now they have really tried to make it way more kid friendly than it was in our day and age. Like it really is much more kid friendly. Yeah. So I wrote down that we ate at Connections Eatery, which I had not yet eaten there Mm -hmm. and we got pizza and it was surprisingly really good. Like (laughs) I try to stay. Yeah, I know. (laughs) It was so good. And I usually stay away from theme park pizza because 
They're like DiGiorno at best. <laughs> hey, I like DiGiorno. And, I just had that and, tonight, I think. Right, but exactly. Like, I don't want to pay yeah. New York City prices yeah, for right. DiGiorno pizza. But this was really good pizza. And I just, I was like, oh, well, maybe I should have gotten a slice of pizza because yeah. we got burgers. I was like, oh, well, that, good that was really good. So We're that was pretty really good reports good. from Connections, right? Haven't you heard it, good it, things? I haven't had any disappointing food mm. from Connections. I, we've gotten a lot. We've tried the liege. So the towns they call it the liege waffle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or and it's not my cup of tea. It's a little too sweet, but my kids devoured the thing. Yeah. So they loved it. It's better um, than what they had there before. Remember, Jackie? What was that? The blue and umbra- blue umbrella. Yeah. I, I don't, I honestly, better. it's so bad. It's so bad that I do not remember <laughs> what was there before. I mean, this is just now the permanent staple for it's me. I, yeah, too. I can't remember what I have vague memories of it, but mm. we never really went in there. Yeah. Yeah. It was so unmemorable. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. That's right. Uh, Let's see. So the Epcot day, we just kind of filled up on festival food and did the Connections Eatery. The next day, when we rope dropped Hollywood Studios, we went straight to Galaxy's Edge and we got Ronto wraps, like the breakfast Ronto wraps, and we got the overnight oats. And then next to, and forgive me because I do not remember where it is that we get those things. I should have written it down, but I was so excited about it. I was like, oh, it was so good. Right next to where you get Ronto wraps, you can get the black calf cold brew. Yes. So that was the first time I've had any of those three items, except I've had a Ronto wrap, but I don't think I had the breakfast Ronto wrap before. They were all delicious. I would recommend them all. Yes. My kids called the black calf cold brew the Cocoa Puff drink. <laughs> Sorry. To give context, if anybody's listening, that's what it is. It's got Cocoa Puffs on top. Yes. And they were really good. So I would... That's probably the best place, I think, to get breakfast at Hollywood Studios, except for the blueberry Mickey waffles on the other side of the park. I mm-hmm. think I'm with you there. Yeah. There's not yeah. a lot of, can't think There's of not it. a lot of places, I, I think, like to eat bakery. breakfast. I used to like the bakery stuff, but that's like in the Starbucks. Yeah. Well, they have that now, but they used to have them near the Brown Derby there. There was one. There was also the book stop oh. one, too. Yeah, I forgot what it's called, but that's where you used to get the carrot cake yeah, cookie, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they closed all those all things those, up. Yeah, they, that's changed a lot. Keep changing it. So, yeah, yeah I'm with you. Ronto. But that Cheers. was really good, the Ronto wraps. That night, so in between, it's not like we skip meals, but because I, I pack sandwiches to go into the park. So it's one of those, that way we don't have to wait for quick service. And if I know we're going to be eating heavy yeah. later, I just try to keep it light in between. Yep. That night we ate Topolinos. Okay. Which is, there's a lot of food. And I know Selena posted about it in the group. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of food that night. That night for appetizers, if you can keep up, we had escargot, which was really good. It was kind of like popover escargot. Like they made popovers with Ooh. the escargot in it. Oh, that sounds good. Oh my gosh, it was so good. I've, I'm going to pronounce, I'm going to mispronounce this. It was duck confit caramel. They basically explained it like little pasta pouches with like duck comfy something or other in the middle. So good. It was delicious. Anything you can get duck comfy from Topolino's, order it. It's delicious. I Uh, think my wife would, I think she's, not that we ever had that kind of fancy duck or anything. I've, they asked, Judy and Margie to ask me what my restaurant will be for our next trip. Topolino's was one of them I gave because I've never eaten there. Oh, Kurt. Right, so sell me. You're missing out. Uh, oh, I, my gosh. Yeah. Tell me about it. Okay. Anything duck confit get, all right. first of all. There was a braised lamb gnocchi. That was pretty good. But I, if, I had to, if I had to pick, mm-hmm. it's the duck. Oh, cool. They have a fresh ricotta appetizer that my husband makes us get every time. And it is delicious every time. But it's freshly in-house made ricotta with some sun-dried tomato, something they add with it. And it is refreshing. It is delicious. It is light. It's really good. Everyone at the table, with the exception of Selena and my youngest child, got filet mignon. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I usually get. Which was, it's delicious. I mean, you don't need to fix what's not broken. I'm all set. I'm all set if that's what they have there. Filet was is always perfectly cooked. Yeah. Selena had the sole 
entree, which was huge. It looks uh, like they put the whole <laughs> fish on the plate and yeah. they couldn't yeah. eat it all. all. Right. Even my son got the kids filet. So he got a filet as well. My youngest son got uh, like rigatoni and pasta sauce yeah. or pasta, like marinara sauce. Mm. But again, really small kids menu. So all right. if you have picky eaters, be aware of Topolino's. It is delicious. We didn't care. We were like, yeah. we will bring you peanut butter sandwiches okay. if you don't want to eat this food. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so good. I will recommend the French rose at Topolino's. So that's the drink that Selena and I always get. I personally think it's the best drink on property. Ooh, fantastic. I, I that's, know that's, that's a, a pretty strong, steep. <laughs> strong recommendation there, Jack. I know. You're starting to sound like a, very, a vlogger. <laughs> it, I have to, like, it is... It's unfortunate because it's only offered at Topolino's. Okay. And even Ooh. at, I think it's called Bar Riva at the, their mm. like pool bar. Right. I went up to Bar Riva when we were at the pool and I said, hey, you know the French rose upstairs? Can you make that? And they were like, well, what's in it? I'm like, oh, you don't that's know? Shocking. Oh, no. They don't even know what's going on upstairs. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, then never mind. I don't want you to like try yeah. to make it and not do I it. Miss so. the mark, right. Never mind. <laughs> so Topolino's was... And even for breakfast, if you get it for breakfast, I mean, we didn't do it this trip, but breakfast at Topolino's is probably one of the better character breakfast meals, I think, mm -hmm. on property. Yeah. It would be my two cents. We have been hearing that. It's very good. <laughs> it's very delicious. You really got me. Even more. It, it, I want to go. That's a great location, too. Obviously. It is fantastic. Power. And I think I've, I put on my notes somewhere that it's bumped California Grill from my top spot. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's shocking. I know. I know, Kurt. I will have to I know why, though. that's the same for Selena, but uh, yeah. it has we'll have for to me. Ask. You can ask her and let me know. But, you know, you and Selena talk about, I think you're bitter about the brunch they mm -hmm. took away from California <laughs> Grill. Am I on to something I'm here? Not gonna con I'm not going <laughs> to confirm or deny that. I will just say everything else is back. I'm not sure why brunch hasn't made it a reappearance. I don't know why. I don't get it. And truth be told, we have not been back to California Grill since they've taken away brunch. I'm not a so professional not, psychiatrist, I'm, but psychologist. They, I just I understand. Don't understand why they take away some of my favorite things, Kurt. Hey, look <laughs> at the shirt I'm sense. wearing. I see that. Not, I see Maelstrom. Not, I do. I see it. We're not I, bitter. I get it. <laughs> we're just, I just need to have some words Sad. with some of these people that make these decisions. Who I just, this? that's all I'm going to say. That's right. Well, I'm so excited for that, that I'm going to, I'm going to push harder. Uh, Funny you, enough. It, so I mentioned California Grill first, because I keep hearing it on the podcast a lot. I haven't been in a while. Mm -hmm. And we're staying at Bay Lake Tower for G3. So I just, and it, it hit like a lead balloon. I was like, wow, they weren't excited about that. I said, what about Topolino? And Judy was like, yeah, I want to do Topolino. Okay. So that well, might be the winner. Doesn't California Grill also have like a prefix menu at the moment? They do, yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that also deters dissuades okay. a lot of people. Like I particularly don't like the prefix meal menus mm -hmm. just because sometimes you want, you know, two yeah. appetizers and not a dessert. Or sometimes you don't feel like either. And it just kind of limits yeah, your experience. Mm -hmm. I know they still have good food. I'm sure they do. I mean, it's Disney. They do that a lot of times with an entertainment package, it seems like, too. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's true, too. So whatever. I'm still holding out hope. I'm excited. Maybe somebody from yeah. will be listening to this podcast. Bring somebody. back the brunch. I know. <laughs> All right. So that was the end of that, the, the, that day. Mm -hmm. The following day was a resort day. And... And Selena and I got a strawberry croissant, which was like a summer specialty item at the Boardwalk Deli. We also got a cinnamon bun there. And these croissants, I don't know if you've seen these viral croissants from New York City where they're like, oh. they're circular and they're filled with things. And I'm sure they have somebody in their pastry department watching these TikToks mm -hmm. because a few years ago, the croissant donut showed up at Disney. And now this particular croissant in, the, in its shape and everything, is at the Boardwalk Deli only on the weekends. Their summer specialty was strawberry, so it's filled with, like, strawberry jam. It was really good. Um, but I don't know yeah. if they're going to continue to do it. Well, that is my jam. That, yeah, the, the bakery so stuff like that, croissant, yeah. 
Yes. You just remind me of the really Corona. Good. Whatever happened to the Corona? I was a big fan of that. Listen, that's another one of my favorite <laughs> things. That has, I don't understand why they take these delicious things <laughs> and make them this disappear. It's, oh, it's not it's right. It's so sad. So that night, we went to Sebastian's Bistro, which was another first for us. Yeah. And that one was really good. I mean, it's one of the... the what do they call it? All you care to enjoy yeah. situations? Family style. Right. right. Family style. They bring it out to the table. My kids ate a roll <laughs> and the ice cream. <laughs> That's all they ate. But the adults enjoyed themselves very much. The pork was delicious. The rice was delicious. The I mean, there were so many things happening on all the plates that the broccolini, Tony Ann, was yeah. delicious. <laughs> we're big fans of broccolini. It came with the quintessential broccolini. So it, there was a lot of delicious things happening. There was a lot of flavor happening. Oh, the steak was delicious. My husband reordered the steak. That was the, they were yeah. like, what else would you like us to bring to the table? And he's like, more steak, please. Chimichurri sauce. Yeah, the chimichurri steak was really good. Yeah. The chicken was okay. really good. Everything was really good. My, I think too many things touched on the family style plate for my children, which is why they were like, oh, the steak's touching the chicken or the rice. And then it just went downhill from there. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> we I, probably ate enough for them. I think this is two good reports in a row for yeah. Sebastian's. <laughs> it was good. It's delicious. Oh, and the, oh gosh, I would Convenient. be remiss if I didn't say that it came with the bread pudding that is the cousin of the Ohana bread pudding. And Belina had a beautiful pour shot. If you haven't seen it, go look for her, her post. Her husband did the pour. She did the videography of it. Yeah. Beautiful work. <laughs> We ate as much as we could, and I forgot that this pudding was coming. I'm like, oh, no, I can't say no to this. But, like, my stomach is telling me don't do it, and my heart is saying do it. <laughs> so so my advice for Sebastian's Bistro is make room for the bread pudding because if you know anything yeah. about the Ohana bread pudding, it is it's right there. First cousin, I feel like. If not. That's saying something. Yeah. It, I really think it's the same thing. But I don't, I can't confirm that. So you just remind me something, Jackie, that you did. And we've got to recreate our picture without the masks. Oh, yeah. The rainbow picture. The rainbow picture with the geek shirts. We have to recreate that without the masks. It's such a great picture. And then Jackie, who has skills with Photoshop. Photoshopped it into a rainbow. (laughs) She can, you don't know which is real and which is Photoshopped on our shirt colors. I always joke that. All of my pictures of all of the children that I have ever taken. Yeah. You never know that I had to take 25 pictures mm-hmm. to get the one picture of them all looking in the right direction, all smiling at the same time. <laughs> this one looks like our rock and roll band photo. <laughs> yes, got, it is very. We will have to try to recreate that that picture the, without the mask. A horrible mask situation at that. Going to have to make a mental note for that one. Yeah. <laughs> you were just mentioning Selena's photo there and it made me popped in my head yeah so the last place we ate which was the first for us was yak and yeti at animal kingdom it was our like last hurrah to end the trip and i have been trying to get a yak and yeti reservation forever i feel like because i've been hearing about doing yoga here (laughs) i like my i do use a lot of hand expressions it's too bad you guys don't do video (laughs) maybe we gotta go to youtube (laughs) But I've been really trying to snag a Yak and Yeti reservation. And let me tell you, the last time I did get one, it was one of those times where I said, it's a three-hour straight shot. Well, it wasn't a three-hour straight shot on our trip in January. And we missed our reservation by like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, I begged and pleaded. And I said, what can you do? And they're like, well, if you want to wait an hour and a half, we can get you seated. And I'm like, that's not good enough. (laughs) I'm so sorry. So... It's been a long time coming. I'm hearing a lot about these ahi tuna nachos, and I've just been dreaming about them. And we finally got them, and they were definitely worth the wait. They were Great. delicious. They were, like, of course, my kids didn't eat them. <laughs> that meant more for me and my husband. And even he was like, these are really good. And he's, I would say he's like my tier of like, are we going to get this again or not? Okay. Do you like this or not? Because I'm, I feel like I can eat pretty much anything, but yeah. 
he's very he's Sick he knows what he likes. Yeah. Right. He knows what Standard. he likes. Yeah, I understand. So the Flay Mignon were, guy. He, exactly. Mm-hmm. He loves Flay. <laughs> yeah, two steak places that sounded great. Yeah. So that was really good. We also got I saw it on a TikTok. So I don't know if this is something they really do on a regular basis, but somebody on a TikTok got the side of garlic noodles, but added chicken, which I did. And yeah. it was delicious. Yeah. It was so good that because we were headed home that same day, we put it in our cooler yeah. and I ate it for three more meals. That's how much food <laughs> came with it. Fantastic. I like that yeah. bonus. So take it home, take it, yeah. put it in your, they were delicious cold, put it in right. your hotel fridge. And it was really good the next day. We also had the tiki masala that day, which was also good, but was not the star of the show, obviously. And the one thing I wrote down about Yak and Yeti is I think it has the most expansive kids menu on property. They had like 10 choices. I mean, obviously they got a cheeseburger, but (laughs) they had like Wagyu. Wagyu. Cheeseburger. They might. They might. Yeah, I don't know yeah, for the kids, but yeah, they used to. But on the regular menu, yeah, yes, yeah. the kids had the option of getting a cheeseburger, corn dog nuggets, mac and cheese, which was normal, but stir fried rice, stir fry noodles, grilled chicken. I think there was also a steak on the menu, possibly. But there was just a lot more options than we had been seeing at a lot of the other properties or the other restaurants. Sorry, not properties, but I wrote that down because it was. A good shock because like, oh, look, you guys can pick something other than cheeseburgers, (laughs) but they did. So (laughs) one day, maybe they will. Another day, another raving review for Yak and Yeti. Oh, it it was worth the hype. It's very difficult to score reservation. I feel like Mm -hmm. I used not this trip, but the trip I didn't get to use my reservation. I used Mm mousedining.com and they send you an alert and then you can just try to get the it works a lot like touring plans, I feel like. Right. Yeah. But yeah, hard to get, but definitely worth it. You got some great ones there. I love hearing I the think, same. I like hearing great like reports food. from my geeks on the same restaurants. That gives it. Yeah. You well, guys that are listening. You pick it up. Yeah, yeah. You pick up from the podcast. You're like, well, I, now I have I to keep, go there. I keep hearing this one. Yes. And Yaki mm-hmm. Yeti, I remember when my, my wife, Marita, told me about it. And we'd been to Animal Kingdom several times by that time. Like, where is it? What are you talking about? There's okay. a restaurant, well, like a sit-down restaurant? I couldn't restaurant. find it. I walked right past it. <laughs> yeah, and I said, I hey, it's... where is this place? And they're like, oh, you have to turn around and go back that way. I'm like, oh. It is. Thanks. I know. I think it's. A, that's. I, and it's out of the. Yeah. Somebody out, knows out it's there. Like corner. you said, if it's a tough reservation, somebody knows Also, it's there. I don't. I mean, I'm sure most geeks know this, but if you're new to the podcast, mm-hmm. it is a part of Landry's is what it's called. Yes. And you can sign up for Landry's like royalty program, I think it's called, or loyalty program, whatever it is. I had to pay $25 to join. However, they give you a $25 gift card. So essentially it's free. Right. And then every year on your birthday, they give you another $25 gift card. So Mm -hmm. that is worth knowing, I feel like. Jamie was telling us they got a better, see, I'm kind of, Interesting that you got that hour and a half thing because she had a similar situation, only she got a 15 minute wait. Well, and I think I at that up. point, I don't think I knew about the Landry's. Oh, okay. So I didn't mention you it because I didn't oh, know. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then I became a member yeah. and went, ah, okay. I get it now. I'm going in now. That would have saved plan. you. Yeah. Now, but it, but our Jan, which I'm not talking about the January trip, but the January trip was during high peak seasons. Right. So. I didn't want to. I was like, you know what? I'm an annual passenger. I'll be back. It's That's fine. Right. So, nice job. Yeah. Did we hit them all? Um, and it, I'm sure we did. But if we didn't, I have my notes. <laughs> we can recover. So I will mention it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Good exactly. job on the food. Thank you. Those are fantastic ones. You got me excited. What it do those again? Honestly, to make Topolino's a high priority. I don't think you will be disappointed. Yeah, I gotta get militant on that one. Okay. Yeah, that I, one is a I gotta, you gotta put that one on your like top, whatever, I, however many. Well, I do top I only get one. Your top three. Oh, I only, only get one. one choice. Oh no. Jackie. I gotta be <laughs> like focused. I gotta get yeah. like, I gotta do your I gotta get focused. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, I don't know. Top maybe that should be your one then. <laughs> I, if that's gonna be my one ask. Please give yes, me one thing. One ask. Give me that one. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. 
Where are we going next? What did you do for fun on this trip? Oh, wow. What Trips. didn't we do? Kurt. Good stories. Is, you got some good a, fun stories. There were a lot of things happening on this these trips. Now, my kids are six and eight. We had a lot of firsts on this trip. In March, we rode Tron during the Passholder preview. So that was fun. That was the first for all of us. Right. And I'm sure you've had a lot of people talk about Tron. I will say and it, or reiterate, if people have said it, is that even though you get a virtual queue, prepare to wait mm-hmm. because I know it was because of Passholder Preview that they were just kind of, we were the test dummies. Mm -hmm. We waited an hour and a half before we got on the ride. It was long. Wow. So it was, again, this was back in March. So I'm hoping that it got a little better. Yeah. (laughs) As as they've gone through it. But yeah, we waited a long time. And we didn't know because we'd never been through the queue before. So you would like... (laughs) Yeah. get through one part of the line and you get to this really cool part and you're like this is so cool I can't wait to ride and they're like and then they open the door and you walk through into another line you're like ah i know how many more of these are we going to get to <laughs> i think it's, now, that may know. be a little better now yeah it, yeah i do think like i said i that was pass holder preview so it was we were definitely the guinea pigs <laughs> and i'm hoping it's a lot better now. so in this june trip my oldest declared that he now likes roller coasters and he went on his first they call it the loop-de-loop roller coaster so we went on the rock and roller coaster and he wanted to go right back on it and i said listen mommy's vertigo cannot handle that so we can't do that but i'm glad you liked it (laughs) my youngest said that slinky is his new favorite ride and these are kids who in in our january trip refused to go on any roller coaster whatsoever they're like absolutely not it's going fast i don't want it and there has been some sort of a switch i don't know what's happened but they're all about it now and they want to do it all yeah well my big question then my buddy james wants to know his favorite ride now he's been on first first time is space mountain but mm -hmm. he does not like tower of terror so did your kids go on tower of terror Okay, well, here's the thing with Tower of Terror. (laughs) I have never done Tower of Terror. You've not told him Um, it's there? (laughs) Well, I sent my husband and my oldest son on it when he was old, like tall enough to ride. He was three. Yeah. And they call it the Scary Hotel. And thankfully, I think I scared the oldest one, who was my fearless one. I've scared him enough into not wanting to ever go on it again. You've traumatized your children. I will never go on that. I'm like, good. I said, I have said, I will go on that ride when they decide to go on that ride. So if they ever say, hey, mom, I'm going to do Tower of Terror, I will reluctantly do it, but I'll do it. I love it. So, yeah. James is in that camp too. They've not been on Space Mountain yet. So we didn't do Magic Kingdom in June, which is when they were like, I want to do all the roller coasters. I was like, this just opens up a whole new chapter for us. That's fun. Yeah. But they did do slinky they did rock and roller coaster they did guardians we couldn't do test track because of the weather Mm -hmm. but what are you gonna do oh that's Um, great yeah something to look forward to next time yeah so yeah and that's the great thing about being able to do that they continue to have firsts i still have firsts and i've been going forever Mm. and a lot so yeah a lot of our table service were first for us we had a lot of firsts these past couple of trips even locals get I I that's fantastic yeah I'm not surprised yeah i think that's it on that part of notes <laughs> chapter turn I'm the page trying to make sure i cover everything <laughs> i'm like oh my gosh there's so much i so wrote much down stress. why did i do that well i won't even lead you you tell me we had a lot of pixie dust moments on this past trip and i want to say i mean not that they are more inclined to do things when you're wearing these pins but because it was my birthday and my sister's birthday we both had those pins on and you're both um, adorable we've established that <laughs> and you can't help that that's just a natural thing <laughs> so we did have a lot of pixie dust moments and i was telling my sister because i was just talking to her i was like we had more than i i realized until i'm starting to like document them yeah so the first one i wrote down was in hollywood studios when we were getting the Ronto wraps and the overnight oats, I went over to order, just normal. I didn't do a mobile order. I just walked right up because there was no line. Yeah. And I ordered two Ronto wraps and an overnight oats. They went to go pick it up. 
and they brought me one of each. And I was like, oh, I ordered two. And but I looked at my receipt and the cast member had only charged me for one. So it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, my fault. You're just doing a little tappy tap. You're not paying attention to price or what you've ordered. And so I said, it's not a big deal. I'll just go order another one. They're like, you know what? It's on the mouse. Just have the second round to wrap. I was Yay. like, oh, well, thanks. I was like, I really would have paid key. for it. It's not a big deal, but thank you. <laughs> another one we had was at the Boardwalk Deli when I was ordering the strawberry croissant. I was chit-chatting with the cast member. We were making friends. She's telling me her best friend's name is Jackie. And I was like, oh, that is a great name. And just chit-chatting with her. And did my order, went and go to the pickup side and she walks over and she brings me a cinnamon bun. And I'm like, oh, I am so sorry. That is not what I ordered. I'm, that was my fault. I wasn't paying attention. She's like, oh no, honey, I know what you ordered. This one's on me. I'm like, thank you. My God, I love cinnamon buns. That's not what I was here for, but I'm still going to eat it. So that was amazing. The lesson learned here is where your birthday pin Whether whether you're embarrassed or not. (laughs) uh, And the thing is, every cast member says happy birthday to you, even when you're not paying attention. Like we were at the pool at one point and there was a cast member like like (laughs) going like this, right? On the other side of the pool. (laughs) And I'm not paying attention to that. My brother. What's wrong with that cast member? (laughs) My brother drowning or something going. Jackie, I think he's trying to say happy birthday to you. And I'm like, what? And I'm looking over at him. Obviously, you can't see what I'm doing here on the podcast. I'm waving my arms as if like yeah. SOS. Hey, come look at me. And I'm looking over and then the guy goes, happy birthday. I'm like, thanks. I just had this okay. flash. I think I'd make a great cast member because I think I'd be doing stupid stuff like that. And but it does make a difference. It is memorable and it does make a difference. That same cast member jumped into the pool, fully clothed. He was wow. loving his job. He was, woo, the kids loved him. That's like, he was great. Going. Yeah. It, it was, that, was, that guy was, I wish I had gotten his name, but he was too far away. I his had one, Jackie. <laughs> we were, I was at Coronado for breakfast. I know Judy and Ken were there. there, And Margita was there, too. And it was my, I had my birthday pin. And this fellow cast member who was cleaning up the tables mm-hmm. said hey would you like a i want to say he said cake or something said, for your birthday i said i'm not that and then i went back up there for something else maybe i got a spoon or something he goes you sure he like he went after me again you sure <laughs> i can get you a free piece of cake <laughs> cake's not necessarily my th-. i said but you know what that boston cream donut that is like as big as my head Mm-hmm. If you want to do that, I'll, he finally—I think he tried three times on me, and he was so cute about mm-hmm. it. And yeah, I do like Boston cream donuts that are big mm-hmm. as my head. <laughs> yeah, so fun. They really do. I think they really do go out of their way to to be kind in those manners, and that it, it really makes a difference. And um, I don't mean this to sound—I'm kind of blunt sometimes—but people who are doing janitor roles or yeah, pick up staff people they just have the greatest attitude and do these things and it doesn't like the, it's nikki yeah. on the asphalt have you seen them yeah right <laughs> like yeah i mean if i was a janitor i would love to take art classes to do that <laughs> <laughs> i mean i find that very impressive yeah i, I honor every just, piece of work but it just sometimes people they could be in a bad mood <laughs> they have the right well, to be in a bad mood yes and yeah i do have We'll get there. All right. So I don't know where to find all these people that have such good moods. <laughs> it's like it's like some of those restaurants that have the like Chick Fil A. I don't know if you guys have Chick Fil A by you, but mm. every time you go, the kids are like, "It's my pleasure." I'm like you know, is it is yeah. it out? But I appreciate <laughs> it. Glenn and I have had this conversation. There's some there is a culture that mm-hmm. can be built. Yeah. And well, it, and it does come from, shocking. yeah, it, it's their, it's what they look for when they're hiring. Mm-hmm. So it's, and they, they must they cultivate really make, it too. So yeah, that's true. You have it too. Yeah. And they just want to be there. That's, mm. but you're right. Chick fil A is a great example. I mean, they're not Disney World. Yeah. No, they're not. They're not. There is one outside of Disney World if you have a car <laughs> and you want to drive off. There's also a Portillo's off property, which is also delicious. <laughs> All right. Let's get so, back, back on track, this, whatever we were doing. Back, back to this. Oh, 
so we had the pixie dust. So another, I don't know if it's pixie dust or just lucky coincidence. Mm -hmm. We were riding Expedition Everest and it was the first time my oldest son was able to get in the single rider line because he's eight and they allow them to do it at seven. Mm. So we got into single rider. I had to explain to him, you will not be sitting by me. Okay. This is not a like, you can skip the line and then sit with me, right? I'm going into this whole big speech, right? About how he's got to be okay sitting by somebody else. This is a roller coaster, da, 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 right? Well, we get up to the line, immediately get put into like different rows. But they kept shuffling us around. I don't know what they were doing. They were like, go to row seven. Actually, go to row four. Go to row eight. And they were moving us around so much. And then finally, right before they opened the doors to let us in, one of the cast members comes over and goes, you can have row six and you'll just get the whole row by yourself. I said, well, if that's the case, can my son come sit with me? He's over there. And they're like, sure. And so he came and sat with us. Oh, good. Or sat with me. Yeah. yeah. And he walked off and said, mom, we skipped the entire line. Man, we got to sit with each other. And I said, I, I know I gave you that big speech. <laughs> but it doesn't happen. <laughs> I know. It doesn't. Right? <laughs> I, it, it doesn't can. happen like that. Yeah. I guess it can. Yeah. But don't expect it next time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I recognize that. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He was so funny about it. So that was fun. The, oh, the other pixie dust moment, we had friends that were there from Australia. Just a weird coincidence. They messaged us out of blue, like two days literally before we were supposed to go up and said, hey, we're at Disney. Are you by any chance going to be up here at any point? And we was like, yes, in two days. Are you going to be there in two days? And they're like, yes. So wow. we coordinated. But what I failed to recognize and failed to ask was, do you know anything about Genie Plus? And do you know how to do virtual queue? Because I just assumed since they were already there mm -hmm. that they had been doing it. So the day that it was our Epcot day and I texted them at like 7.15 or 7.10. No, I'm sorry. It was 7.08. I distinctly mm -hmm. remember because I texted them and I said, I got my virtual queue. This is what group I'm in. What group are you? And they're like, oh, let me go get a group. And I went, oh, <laughs> you're not going to get a group. <laughs> I thought yeah. Oh, no. I should have asked you at 6.58. Yeah. Oh, no. Was this for oh, no. Guardians? For Guardians. Yes, I didn't clarify. Yes, for Guardians. So I said, you know what? Then he's like, well, did you get Genie Plus? I said, yes, I got Genie Plus. I got Remy for, I forget what time I got it for, one. And then he's like, oh, okay, well, it's not available for us until three. And I said, well, just book it. And when I get there, I will handle it. So... We get there, we get to guest services. I plead our case. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> I have five spots for guardians. My sister's not coming into the park. She thinks she is, but she's not gonna. <laughs> like, so my youngest son probably won't ride it. Can you just switch those two people to them? They're from Australia. They are not coming back for who knows how long. And this is their one and only day in Epcot. So I'm like laying it all out on the table. <laughs> Sob story. And she was the, uh, I think her name was Alessandra. She's the only cast member name I remember for some reason. She was like, no problem. I got this. So she does her thing on her little iPad or tablet or whatever she's got going. And she comes back. She's like, I've added them to your reservation. And I'm like, oh, so you took the other two off. She's like, no, I've just put them onto your reservation. That way everybody can ride. And I'm like, like you didn't have to do that. I've written, I mean, in my mind, I didn't say it out loud. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I've written this thing more times than I can count. But I really appreciate it because I, I do That's want nice. to write it. So yeah. she added them on. She also fixed our Genie Plus reservation so that they would be together. Oh, cool. At the same yes, time? And, it was that blue umbrella, yes. right? Yeah. And then she connected us so that she's like, who's going to be doing the booking? I'm like, probably me. I'm going to take over. So yeah. that was... Nice. When it, when in doubt, go to guest services, I think. Be nice. But yeah, that was, it's an easy thing for them to make your trip. It it really it. is. It it's really is. Not hurting anybody On the else. flip side yeah. <laughs> of guest services, because uh -oh. we had a great experience with Alessandra. Yeah. And then we had a Alessandra's questionable experience <laughs> with, I don't know, these poor people, these poor cast members that just deal with people <laughs> all day. God bless them. I, that's all I oh, can say. Lord. Oh my gosh. So not on the same day. It was our Hollywood Studios day. Slinky Dog was down. 
because of the weather, Mm -hmm. but we had gotten a Genie Plus Lightning Lane. And when that happens, just to explain it for the non-geeks who are first-time listeners, when that happens, they give you an extra Lightning Lane. So you can use it at Slinky if it comes back up or any other ride Mm -hmm. that you want, right? Yep, on your app, right. Right. So I'm saying, because I'm Floridian, this rain's not going to last more than an hour. We're going to ride Slinky. I'll just book other things. And when the rain stops, we'll go on Slinky. So I booked Toy Story Mania and Alien Swirling Saucers because like we're in this area. As soon as the rain lets up, we'll just jump on Slinky. Well, when we got to Slinky, they were like, you don't have lightning lane for this. And I went, I think you need to recheck there, lady. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, we do. She's like, can you show me on your app? So I showed her on the app. And sure enough, the three extra lightning lanes were gone and only mine was there. And I'm like, whoa, what's happened? They're like, oh, you need to go to guest services, which is not in Toy Story land. You have to exit Toy Story Mm -hmm. and go out of Toy Story, go like where the Incredibles are meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Where the bathroom's there. Yeah. So I go to guest services and I go, what happened? (laughs) And I don't know what I'm thinking. I did something wrong. Apparently. They have a glitch in their system and they're aware of the glitch in their system where if you tap in to one of the rides more than once. So my kids did it at Alien Swilling Saucers. They tapped twice because they're children and they're impatient and they just, (laughs) it pulled not only from our Alien Swilling Saucers reservation, it (laughs) also pulled from the extra lightning lane that we got. And then it happened to my husband at Toy Story Mania because the cast member asked him to do it twice. Uh He little... Yeah. Beat it, and then they said oh it didn't go through can you just do it again and when he did it it pulled oh, from the extra yeah. well, but it doesn't stop there kurt we huh. i think we get it fixed here's my tip double check that they fixed it before you walk away oh yeah because we walked away and we went over to slinky and we said it's fixed it wasn't fixed and, but here's uh. how they assigned it to my mother-in-law and i was like she's not she's not here and so i i'm in panic mode right because i'm trying to salvage my husband's like forget it we just won't go on this ride blah 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 i'm like no (laughs) we have to go so i find a cast member who is doing the das and doing the rider swap and i said help me please help me do like oh it's no problem you just need to give me your mother-in-law's ticket i'm like she doesn't have a ticket she hasn't been here in five years i don't even know how she got assigned this she was like, how'd you know it was assigned to her because it showed it on my <laughs> disney experience when i pulled it up it shows the names of the people it's assigned to and i'm like i don't even know how she got on this i don't even know she's on this app boy that's a so, story that's believable too because uh, how could she, you have done it she was like she's like so you, she doesn't have a magic band or ticket I said, no she's not even in orlando i don't know sorry sorry that's my alarm to get That's the funny. kids ready for bed. Yeah. Thankfully, she walked us over. We got on Slinky Dog. All was well in the world, but it was one of those, okay, I have to mention this to geeks and listeners. Right. If you get something checked with guest services, just as your own precaution, double check. Yeah. Because they're human and they make mistakes. Yes. And I was in a panic. I was like, oh. Yeah. You. We were talking. I can't call her. When, last night when I was talking with Jamie, check your restaurant bill. <laughs> they had their gift card billed twice yeah. by accident. Oh, no. Right. Oh, well, that's so a good one because I don't check. do that. Right. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, that is a good one. So, yes, that is what my suggestion would be. Glad oh, it all worked out. Like, oh, thank gosh it did. <laughs> it was, I was treading on thin ice because it was raining. It's one of those moments. This was the last thing we were doing. Yeah. Everybody was ready to throw in the towel at that point. I'm like, no, we can't throw in the towel. We have to get it done. Oh, yes. Okay. So the next thing that we did that was really awesome that I don't think a lot of people maybe know about is fishing. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. Yes. I don't know because if I've ever it was, talked to anyone. It, well, Doing the fishing. It, yay. You booked so, it like ahead of time. I, I did. I don't, I think you can book them same day or maybe like the day before yeah but but i because we were there father's day weekend i wanted to like sure assure that we were going to be able to get Mm. to go it's a little confusing and i will say that as a like precursor because disney emails you for everything you made a reservation you canceled a reservation hey you confirmed this hey you didn't confirm this hey can you make it like 
you get yeah. 10,000 emails right. when you book something with Disney. <laughs> but this, I think, is done through like a third party. You can book it through Disney, but their oh. actual thing is a third party. Okay. Because there's no email and you have to write down your confirmation number. Mm. And it that was something I was unaware of. Mm. So if you're going to do it, just write down your confirmation number and make sure that you write when you're getting the information. Write it all down because nobody's going to email you and you're not going to hear from a soul mm. <laughs> until 15 minutes, until 15 minutes before you're supposed to get onto the boat. So okay. basically that's how that works. Huh. So you can do six people on a boat and the people that went were my brother-in-law. Oh no, I'm sorry. Five people because we couldn't go. My sister and I didn't go. It was five people on a boat. So my brother-in-law, my two kids, and my husband all went because they are the fisher people. Mm -hmm. Selena and I are not the fisher people. <laughs> we That is not something we enjoy as much as they do. And it was bass fishing, so it's all catch and release. Mm -hmm. I think you had the choice between going out of, I don't know what the marina is called in Bay Lake, but you can go out of the contemporary. You can go out from the marina at Yacht Club which is called Bayside Marina, which can be confusing mm -hmm. because I kept asking her, I said, are you booking me at Bay Lake or the Yacht Club? And she kept saying Bayside. And I said, that's not what I asked though. Yeah. Which one is that? But it was at the Yacht Club. And I think they also do it out of the Caribbean Beach Resort. Yes. So you could do two hours or four hours. We did two because we have the young kids and mm -hmm. yeah. their attention spans only so long. And when I asked my husband, how many fish did you catch? Because normally he keeps a tally. He and I'm sure my brother-in-law also, mm -hmm. they both said, we couldn't keep count. We caught so many fish. Wow. Did you get and, a sense how large they were? Oh, they were. So, I mean, some of them were small. Yeah. Some of them were little. But some of them were huge. Oh, like, wow. I mean, like huge as in bass, like not like sailfish well, or marlin or anything like that. But like, bass. yeah, it was large bass. Curious. In those I would, bodies of water. I would water. say, yeah. I would have to ask mm -hmm. my husband, because yeah. I'm a terrible gauge at measurement, but like yeah, you my can always six message year old me was later. holding I'm one curious. and it was, yeah, yeah I'll message like, you because I don't. You had some pictures of him holding fish, right? I'm sure I do. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many pictures. I'm sure I do have pictures of them all okay, holding Okay, if you don't fish. know, ask them what they used for bait. I'm curious how they fished for. That, Kurt, I should have asked you yeah. what questions I should ask because <laughs> I. <laughs> no I, idea. I knew you wouldn't know that. We, when yeah. I was a kid, my, my uncle used to take me out like in a canoe. He was big into fishing. My grandfather too. And we don't have the fishing, bass fishing like mm -hmm. you guys have. But we mm -hmm. used to use live bait, little minnows. Right. And a bobber. And they were so yeah. fun to fish because largemouth bass will go, will chase that minnow, put the bait where one is like waiting for it. They go like sharks yeah. after it. It's kind of, It's a fun yeah. It's a fun experience, and I would, I love this. I would love to do. What was the cost of that, Jackie? You know I want to say, so I want to say it was two seventy. Hmm. They do offer pass holder discounts, however, they don't offer it to you over the phone. You have to ask for it at the marina, and it got a little muddled because I asked for it at the beginning, and I said, "Hey, is there a pass holder discount?" And he said he had to call somebody who had to approve it and do all this other stuff, and I was like. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> <laughs> if it can't get done, it can't get done. It's not a big deal. Or if this is something that's taken advantage of very much. I don't think it is. And I don't think they advertise it yeah. very well. Like, I, but it was so much fun. I, my husband was telling me that the fish were biting so like quickly fish, that they right? would barely had time to like put the hook in the water. <laughs> so it was just Not fish surprised. after fish after fish. I mean, yeah, who, would be, and, who would be fishing the place out, right? There's no locals that are going to be in there <laughs> exactly. taking fish out of the place. They're just That's bouncing. That's true. And it's against... all catch and release. So it's not right. like anybody keeps the fish. And so I think because they went out of Yacht Club, they went over towards Swan and Dolphin. And then they also sat a little bit by like where the friendship boats sit, closer to Epcot. And by then it's like already two hours. So oh, it, go it goes by fast. by fast. Sure. Yeah. It goes by really fast. And you're you're might... constantly in motion there. Like you said, you're right. taking it's... one off and putting another one on. Yeah. It is true fishing. Right. Like it is not <laughs> waiting. <laughs> There's a lot of waiting in fishing, but it was true. Like true. Not fishing, like what we call fishing up here. 
Well, and my husband and my brother-in-law both love to fish. So they do open deep sea fishing and all that stuff, but they really nice. enjoyed it. In fact, loved it so much. My husband asked to do it again mm -hmm. the next trip four we hours. take. So <laughs> let him go probably, for four yeah, hours. Probably, but like this time by himself, well, yeah, probably. Like, yeah. let me just go by myself yeah. for four hours. Your brother-in-law or something. Yeah. That's too yeah. Nice. So that was something I, if you have an outdoorsy person, because I have friends who like Disney and their husbands are okay with Disney, yeah. but they're outdoorsy people. And it's yeah. like, oh, well, there you go. There's the like compromise. Perfect. You can go fishing. Selena and I went in Epcot yep. while they were fishing. That's great. <laughs> I love that. I don't know that I've ever had anyone explain that on the podcast. That was fantastic. It's, I love it. And I've I know you can to. do fishing at the resort. So they do have fishing poles. Mm. The other thing is they provide everything. So they provide the bait. Sure. They, I don't know what kind of bait it was, <laughs> but they do provide it. They provide the rods. They give the kids life jackets. Right. They bring a cooler. So you can bring like waters or whatever. I don't think you can bring Soft adult beverages, yeah. but you know, right. you got to compromise a little bit. For two hours? Yeah, what's good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Go drink Crown the World after you're done. <laughs> It'll be a good day. Have a beer and talk about the big one that got away. Exactly. The big fish that's probably mocking you in the, <laughs> in Epcot. So yeah, so that, that was really fun. And I, if you're into that, yeah. highly recommend. Awesome. Yeah. Let's see. I think that is it. Besides rope dropping Hollywood Studios, which is, I recommend totally. Especially What's your strategy for rope dropping? That's a weird one now. Yeah, you could have so, a different strategy on different days. You can't. So I typically with my family, I don't work drop with them because <laughs> it's very difficult to get small children out the door on time for anything. Like you tell them to go brush their teeth and they're like, yeah. they can find 10,000 things to do in between the bed and the brushing of the teeth. Well, you tell me about this first. And then I have a question for you that you're going to hate me for. Um, but... Okay. All right, go yes. ahead. We broke, we managed to rope drop, which I was very impressed with. And it was because of the promise to get on Millennium Falcon, because my kids were like, that was the only thing they wanted to ride. They didn't care about Rise. I was like, you don't want to rope drop Rise? And they're like, nah. Okay, cool. So we went on Millennium Falcon. We could have probably done it three times in a row, like literally walked off, went right back around, walked right back on. We could have done it three times. We only did it twice because after the second time, my husband was like, do we have to do this again? <laughs> it's I guess not. We can go eat breakfast at this point. And at that point, the off property guests were allowed to come in. Right. And you could see, I mean, there's a huge jump <laughs> when that happens in the wait time. So it went from like a five minute wait time to a 35 minute wait. And I was like, yeah, well, time's up, done. guys. That's it. We're done. <laughs> so. Our strategy was get up. I had cereal and milk already in, in the room and we ate, right? Like feed them right away. Uh, you basically lay out their clothes and you say, these are the clothes you're wearing. And when they start to argue with, no, I don't want it. I'm like, no, yeah, I don't think you understand. We didn't pack other clothes for you to wear. This is it. And then you rush them out the door and you get on the Skyliner because the Skyliner, when it's running well, it, it runs quick. Yeah. I have there have been times when you get to the Steinliner and you're like, oh, this is probably the longest line I'm going to stand in all day. But <laughs> yeah. if you get there at the right time, it goes quick. Top. Yeah. That was our strategy. Use the <laughs> Skyliner to our advantage. All right. You ready for my unfair question? Sure. Go. So there's all kinds of ways to do a Disney trip with your family, yeah. with your sister, <laughs> or yes. a geek meet. Oh, no. What's your favorite way to do Disney, Jackie? Oh, that's a tough one. How <laughs> about gonna answer it. with my family sister at a geek meet? <laughs> no, that's not true. I know you don't like that. <laughs> so uh, I think it depends on the reason we're going. I do enjoy taking the kids to, I, I like taking them to the geek meets, but there's a lot of things that happen, I feel like, yeah. that, that my kids won't sit through. Yeah, they like, want to go off and do stuff too. Yeah, they want to they want to do their own thing and for the most part I can do that with them. They're not coming to this one because there's a Boys to Men concert. I don't know if you knew. <laughs> I'm starting to hear. But there's a Boys to Men concert that I'm going to that I was I told Selena I said if we bring these kids, we have to bring entertainment for them so that I can enjoy this concert because I, I will not 
want to hear how they want to go to the bathroom or go, they're bored or whatever the case is. <laughs> I thought we, you were going to be diplomatic to... on this answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do like, well, here, I will say seeing the parks through my kids' eyes mm. is top notch. I mean, I've had a lot of amazing memories come out of the visits I've had with my kids. Yeah. Seeing as, them as babies meet their char- meet the characters has been one of my all-time favorite memories of all time. And even this one, seeing the switch of not wanting to ride roller coasters to all of a sudden, that's all they want to do. And it's like, yeah. oh, okay. I'm... Yes. Okay. That's <laughs> yes. Let's do that. So there are different reasons why I love doing all three of the things you have made me try to choose. You just I gave can't a Sophie's great choice answer. This. The right answer is they're all fun. Yeah. Yes. The, right. I can't Sophie's choice it. Sorry, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> So the last, I guess the last things I want to say, because I know we're going, I know it's been like an hour. It's hitting, the buzzer's going to go off. I know. I can hear like the chitter chatter beyond the door. They got to go, <laughs> go, go to bed. I wanted to say, because I know you always ask for advice for the newcomers. And if you're listening to this podcast, you're off to a good start because that means you're doing research, which I don't think a lot of people do. They think they try to show up at Disney and think it's going to be like it was even just 10 years ago. And it's not. Mm. Do your research, obviously. Plan for heat because there's only like two or three months in Florida mm. where it is reasonable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, like shorts reasonable, but I guess yeah. it would be like winter weather for us because yeah. we're from South Florida. Try to stay hydrated. I kept hearing cast members in June say, don't forget to drink water. Don't forget to get a bottle of water. There's also refreshments. Don't forget. They were constantly saying it. So I can't imagine the amount of people who have heat exhaustion or heat stroke at these parks. That They obviously aren't going to post that anywhere. But drink water, drink Powerade, drink juice, or whatever it is you're going to drink. But I'm a firm believer in the Powerade. I think it's the magical elixir okay. because it's got yeah. all the stuff in it. Yeah. <laughs> I will say one of the days we were there in June, the humidity was at 86%. And if you are not used to that, it hits you like a ton of bricks. It is so humid. I was at, on work today with a friend who lives in Orlando. And he says, when the tourists are here, they're outside and all the Floridians are inside in the air conditioning. Yes. Honestly, the summer is our winter. It is so hot. We just like our AC. We just want to have our cold drink and we don't want to go outside (laughs) unless it's in the pool and then we'll go. (laughs) So my Florida tip for anybody who's coming to Florida in these hot months is to, we invested in long sleeve rash guards, which if you go to like, uh, like an outdoorsy outdoor world type of place you can get like fishing shirts and they're long sleeves they're designed for the heat and to keep you protected from the sun okay that's what we do we always wear those this time around i got ones for my kids that have hoods on them so they were able to put it up Mm. and they're quick drying material so if it rains it's also good for that because it dries really quick Mm. and and that's the other we use quick dry clothes because inevitably it is going to pour. Whether we, even if it says zero percent chance of rain, it's going to pour. Just keep that in mind. Right. Three so o'clock. We pack, yeah, three to four o'clock. This time around, it was at eleven a.m. So it threw us for a little loop. All right. But you know, it is what it is. We were still prepared. I bought cooling towels. We were asked several times in the parks where we got them. Amazon has cooling towels. You wet it with some water, and it stays oh, cool. Yeah. Keep you put it on That's your great. neck. It's amazing heavenly we also brought like a neck fan we only brought like one or two of those because the kids start to play with them and it becomes a toy and it's a whole thing it's yeah it's a whole debacle (laughs) but they can make the heat less intense but plan for rain like it just said so we when we go in we bring in our ponchos we bring in like flip-flops or water shoes so that because i don't know how the water doesn't drain in (laughs) why would they build a place where the water wouldn't drain (laughs) but when the water dumps 20 five inches in five minutes, yeah. <laughs> it floods. So if you want to keep your shoes dry, take flip-flops or something that you can slip on easy. And then we put our sneakers in our backpack and ponchos over everything to try to keep things as dry as possible in those moments. Those are my Florida tips. Thank you. When you're coming those in the hot. So. Fantastic. <laughs> and they're coming from a super mom in Florida. I love it. We go there like we are backpacking or hiking. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> got our sandwiches in tow. Yes. We have sandwiches, protein bars, trail mix. We got all the 
water bottle. Right. We literally bought a hiking backpack <laughs> for Disney. Jackie, fantastic job. Was, was there anything from this trip that you can say you're going to remember particularly big time? So this time around, I think this is the trip I'll remember where my kids flip the switch to adventure. Yeah. My youngest son is the refuser to ride on. He takes after his auntie in like every, he is like the mini me of Selena. Mm -hmm. And really is not a big fan of the roller coasters usually. But this time around on Slinky Dog, he said, Mom, I really like Slinky Dog. And I went, oh, that's new. He's like, I even put my hands in the air when I was on the ride. And it was like, what? I said, I don't believe. It. But we have the picture to prove it. All four of us have our hands up. And the same with my older son he was like i think i can do the upside down roller coaster ma and i was like oh okay so i think that for me is going to be the one i take away from these trips that is fantastic and i know you're gonna have more great memories as these guys yes. get even a little older yep jackie this is you're awesome thank you so much definitely say hello to your sister selena for me and i know i think we're gonna see you at g3 right Yes, we are going Good to be point. there. We have a Disney cruise the Ooh. weekend before that. Oh, okay. So I don't know exactly when we are coming up. I think, I, I don't know when Selena, I don't know what Selena's plans are, truthfully, truth be told. <laughs> I myself am coming up Friday to Sunday. Okay. That's how much I know. Yeah. Outstanding. Anytime I get a chance to see you guys, it's awesome. You got to see some friends on this trip. Did you see any geeks on this trip too? No. So it's funny you say that. I don't know if I saw any geese in oh. the March or June trips. I what's funny is I'm oblivious. I'm walking around oblivious unless I like yeah. unless I'm checking Facebook, which I don't normally do until like I'm in the hotel and everybody's sleeping and I'm posting pictures and then I'm looking. I'm like, oh, this person. I think in January that happened. I was posting pictures. I'm like, oh, Wendy was there today. Oh, yeah. and actually in June, I take it back. Tony Ann was there, mm -hmm. but I didn't know until at the end of the day, again, I'm checking and she's like posting things. I'm like, well, were you there today? What happened? <laughs> Did we miss? But we were just in different parks and at different times. And <laughs> all right. It just happens that way. Yeah. I, well, believe me. Believe me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stay in touch. All right. I'm so Absolutely, glad Kurt. we got a chance to do your solo. I know my first solo. Without other. People. Without my sister, or without your sister, <laughs> you're awesome on your own. Oh, thanks. Ditto, Kurt. Ditto. Yeah. Thanks, pal. <laughs> we'll see you real soon. All right. All right. See ya. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Great report, Jackie. So good. I keep telling you, we have awesome geeks in this geek and family. Jackie's just another one of them. I posted the picture. We were talking about in the Facebook group. It's the one that looks like the, the rock and roll group picture in Epcot. And guys, let's not forget to recreate this picture at G3 without the masks on. It's got to be redone. Jackie changes the colors of our shirts. Our, we usually wear on Saturday our Geek It On Walt Disney World podcast shirts. That was such a great picture. We got to recreate that one this year at G3. Okay, Jackie and Samantha and Wendy and Deirdre, Selena. Yeah, get ready to go to G3. Send Margita and Judy an email. Traveling Tierras at gmail.com. Get your plan started. Book your room, your package. Come down for the weekend or stay a little longer. We're going to be there. Margita and I are there like 12 nights. It's going to be fantastic. Our good friend Kevin and his wife Deborah, and lots of geeks, close to 100 of them, I think, are planning. Samantha and Tony Ann and Judy, thank you so much for all the planning you guys have been doing booking hoop de doo we've got the halloween party is set up beer garden we're doing on saturday and they've been setting up some of those adrs and collecting people together to i think that beer garden i think they booked over 60 people in beer garden and some of us are doing the boys to men concert package at epcot that day it's gonna be a fun saturday September 28th through October 1st is G3. I'm doing a countdown in our Facebook group, but 
you got to make those plans. Come on down. We'll have fun. It's going to be Geektoberfest down at Disney World. And thank you, everyone, who supports the podcast through Patreon.com. That's a, a website where you can pledge a monthly donation to the podcast. I've started up Meet a Geek episodes in the Inner Circle podcast. I released episode 155. I got on a Zoom call for like 90 minutes with our good friend, Auntie Judy. Would you like to hear what Judy did for work, what she does now, what she does for hobbies, a little bit about her family? And I have some amazing questions. These were questions sent in many years ago from the geeks, getting to know all about her love of Disney World. Bunch of questions. So 90 minutes a chat with Auntie Judy I released in the Inner Circle podcast. That's the bonus podcast I do for our Patreon supporters. And you can listen to all 155 of those bonus episodes if you become a member. Thanks so much, guys, for supporting the podcast, whether it's through the Traveling Tears or through Patreon.com or both. We appreciate you guys so much. Get into the private Facebook group or some of the extra, you know, the Poo to Tigger group is awesome people talking about their personal health and weight loss and things they're doing runs and the run disney events puda tigger is a group that we have on facebook if you'd like to be a member just let me know our regular facebook group is always happening again happy birthday to andy hoffman we were all posting about that and hey shout out to andrea willard she found a black spire outpost bag looks like in a local shop You'll see all the some of the plans being made for G3. Again, hoop de doo Beer Garden. Oh, Boma Breakfast was the other one they were booking. Thanks, Tony Ann, Samantha, and Judy. Getting on that. Samantha posted a G3 graphic of all the events that are happening. So if you want to know what's happening, check out that graphic that Samantha posted in our Facebook group. And you know something? The Moana attraction might be ready for G3. They're promising it for the fall. Both Tony Ann and Scott Daves feel like it's going to be done. Scott Daves thinks maybe Labor Day weekend. That would be awesome. I posted an article from the Disney Food Blog in the private Facebook group. So get connected with the community. Keep on top of things that are happening in Disney World. And we do all this for you guys because we're committed to helping you enjoy your Disney World vacations. Reach out to me if you'd like to do a trip report, book a trip, review trips. Kurt.Stone at geekinonww.com. Send in an intro, too. I am using all those intros I had from the 500th episode. Thank yous, but I love it when you guys send me in, just like Wendy sent me in for the Albany meetup. Thanks for going geeking on Walt Disney World with us. We really appreciate you listening and geeking with us every single day. We love you, geeks. Have a magical day, and I hope all your dreams come true.